I'm Dr. Ryan DeBell from The Move It Fix. This is Move It Fix Monday. I'm here with Mike Boyle at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning. Thanks for coming into no the problem. videos Thank once again. Thank you for coming by to visit. Yeah. As I said, I've watched, I've watched the videos and read the articles, so it's great awesome. to have you here. So what we're going to talk about in this video is single leg squatting or split squatting, why we would want to choose that a lot of times over bilateral squatting or more symmetrical conventional squatting and how you guys use it here and how you do it here. Okay, so. so I think we've talked about the fact, so to me, and this is where people get confused, I am fine, like I want people to be able to squat. I want people to be able to deadlift. My thing is when, one, when you start getting to heavy loading, I think, again, I always talk about the fact, the failure, the injury area is always the low back. So if we can take the load and cut it in half, and get the same. So if I look at this and think, you know, if I could back squat 300 pounds for 10, and then I could suddenly stand here with 75 pound dumbbells and split squat 150 for 10, yeah. that's the same equivalent load on this working leg. Again, we always go back to the idea that's math. Right. No matter any way you slice it, that's math. The difference is my spine is experiencing half the load. And this has my, been, been my big argument with people for unilateral training is we know where the failure point is. It's like in any mechanized piece of equipment that you make, I don't care what it is, engines, whatever it is, the linkage, there's gonna be something that breaks down sooner than other things. In the human body, it is absolutely positively the lumbar spine. 80%, you're a chiropractor, you know, that's your business. 80% of the people in the world. Back. 80%, I yeah. mean, that's the statistic, right? right? So if we look at that from an athletic standpoint and say, I can decrease the load, the compressive load, the torsional load, all of those loads by 50%, why would I not do that? That's the biggest, most logical place. Then we get into the idea, and I always say to people, how many legs do you walk on at one time? How many legs do you run on at one time? There's a huge case for unilateral training from a functional anatomical standpoint. When I stand on one foot, when I do this, or when I do this, what happens in my pelvis, and again, I'm preaching to the choir telling you that, yeah. but my quadratus lumborum, my adductors, my hip abductors, all those things become stabilizers that are not all that active in double leg stance. So I think we keep going back to that idea, what if the way we always did it was wrong? We were taught to lift as kids a million years ago by bodybuilders, by power lifters, by Olympic lifters, by all people who were very well served through bilateral exercise. Yeah. But the people that we're dealing with now when we start thinking about just our adult client who's moving around, or our athletic client who's moving around, they're moving around unilaterally, they're not, you know, we don't, that's, that's not our method of ambulation. We're not rabbits. So why would we be so focused on this bilateral idea? So I guess the point is I could rail on for a half an hour on why it makes more sense. Uh -huh. And then it's always, it's amazing how people go back and you know, oh, Mike Boyle doesn't want people to be able to sit on the toilet. Mike Boyle doesn't want people to be able to sit in chairs. That is not what we're saying. What we're saying is that when it comes time to get strong, I'd much rather get strong unilaterally. So we're gonna teach somebody yeah. to goblet squat. I have no problem with this, right? I want somebody to be able to do this. The problem is when, let's just say, when they can goblet squat the 100 for 10, why would I not then go to a pair of 55s here and split squat and go to 110 and lessen that low back load and realize that even just from an equipment standpoint, I can now move, if I was strong enough, from 55 right back up to 100 again and get a load of 200 in that split position. Mm -hmm. And the thing that kills me is that people will then argue the math. Well, your other leg's helping, it's not exact. That's not the point. The point is that the load your spine is experiencing is going to be decreased by half. And it's going to be brought, you know, if we're talking like for us, suitcase style lifting, yep. it's going to be brought closer to the center. So now we're eliminating your, we're decreasing torques because we're not placing a bar up here. So now suddenly, you know, when I, when I lift in this suitcase position, my, you know, I don't have this torque generator up here at my neck. Right, and direct compression. Exactly, and compression. I would say that there's, there's things that you don't like. Shear, you know, which is, the, you know, when you get here, that, you know, shear, yeah. compression, torque. Those are all the things we know the back doesn't like, and they're all things we can simply decrease when we start um, doing unilateral training. So it's just so common sense to me. And, and then the obvious sports performance benefit from a, a sprinting, running, jumping. We actually have athletes, I've been doing some study 
with our women's life, Olympics, our women's Olympic ice hockey team since 2010. So it's six years worth of data. I have women now who, when we started, had vertical jumps under 20 inches. They now, one of them now has a 30 inch vertical jump from 18 to 30, so that's a foot. But more importantly, her unilateral, so her single leg takeoff and landing is now the same as what her double leg vertical jump was. So she's at 18, she actually, the one, one of our women, 30 inch vertical jump, 19 left, uh, no, 20 left, 19 right, 39 when you start thinking about bilateral deficit, 39 inch when we combine left and right. Mm -hmm. That's huge stats when you think that she started at 18 from a bilateral standpoint six years ago. All unilateral training, primarily, you know, obviously we're Olympic lifting yeah. to get that power generation. But so when people start talking about, you know, you can't get the performance benefit, there's so many things that people say, but I always think it's because they're clinging to that sacred cow of squatting. Like, I don't want to let go of this thing. And then you get into, like you've talked about hips. I mean, you know, we've got people, FAI, there's, there's lots of reasons to not, to yeah. not squat. But, so you so, have this piece of equipment here. Yep. And this is what you guys use for your split this squatting is what primarily? We use, but actually we start here. So okay. everybody will learn to split squat. And the reason we developed this is we found our better athletes as we got, and this when we first started, we were doing back split squats, really heavy loads with our athletes. So we were up into the 280s. The one thing we found from a complaint standpoint, people's big toes were killing them. When we oh, split- because it's loaded on the back. Exactly. Okay. When we split, switch to this rear foot elevated split squat, what people love to call Bulgarian split squat or Bulgarian lunge, I hate that name because people were doing this long before the Bulgarians came over. So we would simply call it a rear foot elevated split squat. Right. That takes away the toe pain. It also decreases the load because when I'm here, I've got two relatively stable points. Okay. When I get to here, you can't use the back leg as much. Right, I can't use the back leg as much. And we're trying to teach people how to not use the back leg. So we spend a lot of time really teaching somebody how to set up where their weight should be on their front. We tell them front heel. Really, probably, actually midfoot driving down through their tibia. But most people will tend to pitch this forward. We try to tell people that it's an elevator, not a saw. <laughs> so if you're sawing your split squat back and forth, that's wrong. It should be very vertical okay. in orientation. And we'd line them up. So if you look at me, my knee is just a little bit posterior to my hip. So I'm getting a gentle. You're not doing the, this is, I think, one of the things that happens a lot is people do this. Yes, way, way too much, yeah. particularly when you've got this back leg rigged up because now you've got additional rectus it's femoris huge, stretch, yeah. big right. loads. Load. And then again, we go back, we keep, I always say, we goblet load until we can't goblet load anymore. Okay, and then so, you go. So yeah, when you stuff. can't get the weight up here, then we're gonna go here. Okay. And then from here, it's, it's a very vertical emphasis where I'm thinking, drive up and try to think. I always say, like this back leg is like the outrigger on a canoe. It's there to stabilize the canoe. It's not there to generate force. Got if it. someone says to me, I feel it in my back leg, my back leg's getting tired. I'm like, you need to switch your focus, switch your orientation to yeah. your front leg. We do a lot of pure one leg squatting too because as our athletes get really strong, it's almost unavoidable that they'll use too much back leg and then it becomes time to progress to something. Just one leg, just a okay. real one leg squat. Yeah. Which, um, again, is just another way to make it harder. But the, the basic idea, I, and I, as we talked about this article, I just wrote an article on unilateral training. I don't understand except for, we go back to this, but that's how I always did it. That's how my coach taught me. That's what I did when I was in college. Other than that, anybody, with a reasonable analytical mind is going to look at the unilateral stuff and be like, makes, makes sense. perfect sense. It yeah, it make makes sense. perfect sense, exactly. Like you yeah. would look at it and think, this makes perfect sense. This is what we should do. Yeah. So there's right. my more leg training with less of the back load and the shear and all that stuff, less exactly. compression. Yep. And then uh, one thing too that I see, and maybe you can speak on this for just a minute or so, is I think a lot of times people put the back leg too high. Yep. Well, that's why we made this adjustable. It's funny, we're the first. The first generation that we made was interesting in terms of we just made them the size of the bench. People yeah. said, how high should the stand be? I said, bench 18 height? inches. Okay. <laughs> because I went and I measured the bench, the bench was 18 inches. Yeah. And then we talked about this uh, in the segment, we talked about pulling from the floor. We realized that that's a pretty big differential when, when we have kids here that are five feet and you know, we've had people here as tall as seven. You know, we've got a two foot span in there, yet everybody's using the same height. Then we said, let's make it adjustable. So now 
perform better. I kind of, initially I designed the idea for them and then they went out and said, okay, let's get this done. I think now the third generation actually is full pins okay. and slides. So we're, we're three generations yeah. deep on this thing. But, nice. but yeah, and we found lower is better. So okay. if you're choosing, choose low. because again, choose low, because some people will be uncomfortable just based on the stretch. Too much stretch, I don't like the way that it feels. Got it. I don't like that anterior hip feeling. Mm -hmm. And we find with those people, I'll go back to split squat. So we would look at this as a progression from split squat anyway. Okay. If someone's getting some anterior hip pain, I'm just going back to split squat. Got it. Awesome. Got it. Hey. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. It. Thank you. So that's some stuff you guys on the split squat as well as why you should be looking at doing split squats instead of always just doing bilateral squats. Uh, if you don't already follow Coach Boyle, make sure to follow him. I'll put the links down in the description. That's what I got for you guys this week. I'll see you next time. Thanks.